just before we we get into the intro here i just want to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of jim Cornette. in game not in real life this is just clarify that right now i'm sure the wrestling community and world would mourn mourns the loss of jim would they like gen- i'm g- genuinely curious like if in real life, Jim Cornette passed. Because he has been such a controversial figure, would people... Like, do you think they, they get, like, a... You get one of those, like, memorial shows on SmackDown or something? You know, the black screen with the single picture and the dates and times and in Times New Roman font? Would you get one of those? Leave that one in the comments. Do you think Jim Cornette deserves a memorial show? <laughs> Fuck, that's dark. Welcome back to Bash Bros and episode 8, 19, god fucking damn it, (laughs) episode 19 of Notorious Pro Wrestling where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. Just before the intro you saw the biggest piece of news that we had which was that Jim Cornette had passed (laughs) in game. This is the weird thing about doing a TW show, you don't want to like make things too like if I like it, you don't want to make your thumbnails and stuff too clickbaity because like if I God forbid I put out like a, this if the thumbnail for this was like oh Jim Cornette passes away and people just happen to see it on YouTube and then they click into it and they're like oh what the fuck Jim Cornette's not actually dead and that's how Twitter rumors get fucking started <laughs> if like people pass away so Jim Cornette has passed in game not in real life um yeah but other than that there really has been absolutely no news uh he's uh, he's were here last week and he's back again this week so thank you. I did say we would take a look at the updated brackets for the women's tournament, so let's do that right now. So, as you can see, this is what our quarterfinals look like. We have Riho versus Killer Kelly. I will not lie, um, I forgot to mention this last time, but when the news article came through about uh, Riho being released from AEW, I misread it the first time and thought she had been released from, uh, from us. From NPW, and I thought, what the fuck? It no, that's my my tournament. Fuck. But no, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I Rio is not the contract has not expired with us. She is now solely working for us at the minute, which is great. Um, so yes, that match will go ahead as as planned. Uh, also in the quarterfinals, we have Tessa Blanchard versus Viper. We have Kaylee Ray versus Zia Brookside, and we have Maiko Satamura versus Tennille Dashwood. We will be doing the first quarterfinal match today, I believe. And with that out of the way, there really is not much else to talk about, so let's get into it and we will book the show. And we are back, coming at you live from... Oh shit, uh, Ringside Theatre? Ringside Club? Ringside Club? Ringside Club. Coming at you live from the Ringside Club in Ireland. It's Thursday Night Wanted. Actually quite a felt show. Um, don't know why that is. But we pretty much covered nearly all the storylines this week. I've also also booked a lot quicker because I I kind of like plan four weeks in advance now. Um, like I, I very loosely jot out storyline ideas and stuff like that um, because it helps. I feel like it helps me flow a lot better. Um, but enough behind the scenes. This is the show as it stands. There's not that much to talk about, so I think we should just get right fucking into it. So we open up with Zia Brookside coming out of the trainer's room and being interviewed, still looking very banged up from Alpha Female's post-match attack last week. Her match with Keely Ray is later tonight. I think it's actually next. 29, not great. Zia is... I don't think Zia Brookside is that good at the minute, but she is still very young. So I think she's definitely one for the future. Uh, but 29 is exactly like the sort of thing that like she's just 
in, an indicator to me is that she's not fantastic at the minute. Moving on to the match then, so in a pre-show match that had good heat and decent wrestling, Kaylee Ray defeated Zia Brookside in 20 minutes with the Gory Bomb. Kaylee Ray had a 43 and Zia Brookside had a 32 in a 40 rated match. Kaylee Ray definitely dragged Zia Brookside by the nose on this one. This match also had an instruction for storytelling, so the main th- storyline throughout this match is that, yeah, the injuries Zia got from the attack from Alpha played a ma- massive impact on her in-ring performance in this match. Which again will tie into that mini narrative between the two that one alpha female is annoyed she lost to someone like Zia and Zia is annoyed at Alpha because those injuries caused her a possible longer run in the tournament. Then we have an angle. So Doug Williams comes out and invites Chris Hero out to the ring and offers Chris a career versus title match at the pay-per-view. Obviously, Chris Hero has been very reluctant to give Doug another match as he's had two opportunities before. But Chris Hero accepts. He's like, yes, I can finally get you out of my my hair. You've been a pain in my ass all the time. If I can finally get rid of you, fine. One more match. Your career versus my title. And then a bunch of wrestlers who have kind of become friendly with Doug in the past couple of weeks, maybe longer. Kayfabe-wise, longer in reality, probably the last couple of weeks, come out to try and stop him. So obviously... We've established that he kind of has that relationship with the Grizzled Young Vets, and that also Jody Fleish, who he helped out last week, tries to stop him as well. 55, so Chris Hero probably put in the best performance there and helped carry that. Moving on to a tag match then. Um, in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Dynasty defeated the NIC when Davy Boy Smith pinned Charlie Carter with the Bulldog Bomb. Davy Davy Boy Smith had a 48, Joe Henning had a 49, Charlie Carter a 41, and Oshin Delaney 43. I have to be honest, I'm actually very impressed with Joe Henning and Davy Boy Smith and their performance so far. Like knocking on just that 50 that 50 mark. Like 50 and above is kind of where I expect my main eventers to be at. Maybe a 60 on a really good day. So the fact that they are maybe like on that upper mid card is a lot better than I was expecting from them. And then the NIC kind of getting a 41, 43 shows that they're no slight. Like they're not slight either. You know, like that's a very good solid mid card performance from those two. 44 overall. So after the match, then the Grizzle Young Vets come out and are like, "We heard that you wanted a challenge. Well, here's your challenge: the best tag team in the UK." That is then leading to the Grizzle Young Vets versus Dynasty at the Fear No Man pay-per-view. 40 overall, an angle then, so all the faces are backstage, still complaining to Doug, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Why are you doing this? You know, you don't need to put your your career on the line. Conor McGregor then comes up to him and asks Doug, look, are you sure you do want to do this? And Doug's just like, yeah, 100%, we're going ahead with this. And Connor says, right, we'll get the contracts drawn up. The next feud the hero is going to go into after the Doug feud is going to be that match with Connor, which we've kind of teased a wee bit pretty much since the start of the... Pretty much since uh, Chris first won the title. And I want this to kind of be the catalyst um, for that feud. So the fact that Doug could possibly lose... Or the, the fact that Doug, Doug could possibly retire after losing to Chris. Because the idea is like, you know... Doug was always the first pick for this company when Connor decided to start it up, which is true. I, like if you go back to the first episode, pretty much Chris Hero and Doug Williams were my fir- first two picks, I think, uh, about who was going to be on my roster. So I want this idea that Connor has the utmost respect for Doug. Seventy-nine in this, so the only people talking in this one really were Connor McGregor and Doug. So Connor helped drag a very good segment there. So after confronting Ace last week about being his possible attacker, uh, this match was booked, so we had Ace Austin versus James Storm. So in an exceptional match, James Storm defeated Ace Austin in 20 minutes with the forward lung blower. Uh, Ace Austin got a 53 and James Storm got a 56. Both main event caliber performances and overall the match was a 56, which is great. So after the match then, Pentagon Jr. attacks James Storm and reveals he was the one who blindsided James at the pay-per-view, costing him his title shot. And the only reason that Pentagon gives is that his master commanded it. That is a 49 rated segment. Again, I still, I keep forgetting to check whether Pentagon has just suddenly learned English, um, but this was both guys talking in this, I'm pretty sure. And I got a 49 and there's no 
read warning thing about Pentagon not speaking fluent English, so maybe he has, I don't know. But this will lead to a match between the two at Fear No Man. And that is the show. So overall we got a 50 and I only just saw that there now, so the fans were annoyed about the amount of non-wrestling segments they had to sit through. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 3 matches. Okay, that's fair enough. I I've haven't got that before in this playthrough. So it's maybe something just to keep an eye on. I, I probably could have cut the Connor asking Doug if he's sure segment, but I did want to get a Connor McGregor segment in there because we hadn't had one for a couple of weeks, I realised, after this one, after booking the show. But overall, 50's alright. It's still in the ballpark of what we're aiming for. And at the end of the day, we still increased our popularity in all the regions that were, that were shown in, televised in. So I'm just looking through the news here and I just saw this one. So Powerhouse Hobbs possibly leaving AEW. Would I hire Powerhouse Hobbs? Maybe. I think he is... Like for a big guy he's very good and very athletic. He doesn't work in Britain but I could ask. He's not particularly young though. Stamina, his stamina is strong. Maybe. I think that's one that I'll, maybe I'll shortlist him. One to watch out for is Powerhouse Hobbs. That is it for another episode of Notorious Pro Wrestling. Thank you for as always for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, do subscribe and do hit the like button. And if you do you have any ideas for creative directions, storylines, possible feuds, par possible partnerships, leave them in the comments. Um, as I said it once, I'll say it a hundred times, I love the idea of you guys, the audience, the guys on Reddit, the guys on Instagram, wherever you discovered us, wherever you communicate with us, I love the idea of you guys having a say in which way the direction of the company goes. Next up is the Fear No Man pay-per-view, which will include matches such as uh, Dynasty versus the Grizzled Young Vets, the Cyborg Wolves versus Kings of the North versus Filthy Generation, Pentagon Jr. versus James Storm, and the big one, Title versus Career, Doug Williams versus Chris Hero. But yes, that is it for another week. I will see you at the pay-per-view. I will see you next time on Bash Bros, and sincerely, thank you once again.